and welcome to Talking with Takaya at Godly Chick. Hi, Godly Chicks. This is your girl, Takaya Love. And today in um, our Talking with Takaya, we are actually going to discuss something that I did not know that the Lord was going to put on my heart for me to talk about already. Um, because I look, I wanted to hop into love and relationships. And y'all already know, look, what to find in a good man, what not to find. That's the kind of stuff I love talking about. Amen. Um, But the Holy Spirit will have his way and he wanted me to talk. I'm going to cut this down just a little bit. He wanted me to talk about Cain and Abel. So we are going to dive into that right now. I'm not going to be before you guys long. I'm trying to keep these videos under 15 minutes because... You know, I don't want to be long teaching these things. So let's just go ahead and dive right into it. So we're going to start at Genesis chapter 4 verses 1 through 8. And this is the New King James Version. So I'm going to go ahead and start reading. Now Adam knew Eve his wife and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you so angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, but you should rule over it now Cain talked with Abel his brother and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him (sighs) y'all I don't even know like God gave me so much on this um, and I'm gonna try to tackle it all tonight so I won't have to make a part two But the gist of the whole entire story that I just read was if you continue, this is what I felt the Lord was telling me to tell you guys. If you continue to bring me the wrong sacrifices, you will sin. You keep trying to bring God money as if you can buy your way into his grace. You keep trying to bring him a new conference, a new ministry, a new talk show, a new book. You keep trying to bring God stuff that he doesn't want while you keep the best parts of yourself to yourself. But the sacrifices that the Lord wants is the sacrifice of a broken spirit and a contrite heart. That is what the psalmist said, David, that he will not despise. As a matter of fact, let's go there and read that. Psalms 51, verse 16 through 17. For you do not desire sacrifice or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O God, you will not despise. Y'all, when our hearts are broken, we are completely open to the Spirit of God and recognize our dependence on Him for all that we have, all that we are, and all that will ever be. This is the type of sacrifice that completely kills pride in all of its forms. But if you are unwilling to give the Lord your heart on the altar, then you may as well keep your sacrifice. It's worthless to me. That's what the Lord is saying. It's worthless to me. If you cannot come to me broken, then I don't want it. 
We bring these vain offerings, these cute worship songs, and then we're on social media in church scrolling through Facebook and not even listening. We're not even participating in worship at our local church. The only time you listen or participate in anything is when you're involved or when the mic is in your hand. So you are not a doer or a believer or a follower of the word of God. You're just a performer. And some people don't even want to be changed. They have a form of godliness with no power. And God is saying, it looks good. It sounds good. You're bragging about how much you've prayed, how much you've done for other people, but it's all for show. And they do so many things to make themselves look good, but they won't do the actual flesh work and humbling that it takes to actually be good. That's it. They won't bring me their heart. They won't bring me the one thing above everything else that I long for. They won't bring me the one thing that I'm looking for. All these sacrifices. All of these offerings. But you're still keeping your heart hidden in a box away from God. All these sacrifices, all of these shows and offerings. But you still won't give God your heart. He can touch everything else in your life but your heart. Cain was a person who wanted to reap the rewards of an able type relationship without an able type of offering and sacrifice. Abel is happy, offering God his best. And one of the translations that I read said he found the fattest animal from his flock that he could bring and laid it on the altar before God. And instead of Cain going to God and asking, Lord, what can I do for you to accept my worship and my offering? The sad thing is the Lord told him. (laughs) The Lord told him what to do and that he would be accepted if he did it. But Cain would much rather kill Abel than bring God his own heart. Because it's so much easier to hate than it is to love. It's so easy for me to murder someone than it is to bring my best to God. And in these days, you may not be murdering people in actuality, but you murder people with your mouth You murder people with your pride and you try to make them feel less than to make yourself feel higher. You murder people with your evil intent behind your motives. You murder people and claim that you're of God and that you speak for God. And the reason why Cain murdered Abel is because he had his eyes focused on where they should not have been. They should have been on God and on his self and on what he could do to bring a better offering, not on Abel and what Abel was doing and how he was accepted and how he was blessed and how he was favored and how God was accepting him. But it should have been on me It should have been on Cain. It should be on you, not someone else. But because Cain's eyes was unable, he could see his righteousness and it agitated him. Because to Cain, Abel's righteousness highlighted Cain's unrighteousness. Abel bringing God his first fruit of his flock highlighted Cain 
bringing God his last of his field. Abel's joy highlighted Cain's anger and his insecurities and the relationship that he wanted with God that he yet didn't have. And Saul was another person who walked in that same spirit of anger, insecurity, and animosity and murder to the point where he wanted to murder David, someone who loved and served him. But I'm not going to even get into Saul tonight. I want to stay on Cain. However, when it comes to love and us bringing our heart to God on the altar, that is all that God requires. Y'all, we try to make things so difficult, but it's so, so simple. The things of God are so simple. Because anybody can show up in church. Anybody can clap their hands. Anybody can holler, run around the church, do ring around the rosy pocket full of posies. I don't know what people are doing. But anybody can do that and pretend to be a Christian. But everyone cannot pretend to love. Because love is of God and it comes from God. And if you don't have the spirit of God, you can't love. That's why Jesus said, you will know my sheep by their love for one another. Rest assured, if you don't walk in love, you do not have the spirit of God. You may have a spirit, but you don't have the spirit, the real Holy Ghost, the spirit of Jesus Christ. And I pray that Anyone who may be walking in a cane like spirit, and most don't even know that they're walking in this spirit. I pray that you would go and really cry and bring your heart before God and ask Him to help you love. That's why David, y'all, that's why David was so close to God. He was so close to God because when it came to Him doing things, He said, Lord, it's not the other people, it's me, oh God. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Help me, O oh Lord. Get this out of me. <laughs> there was a story um, in the New Testament. Luke, I believe. As a matter of fact, let's, let's just go there. Let's go there. It's about two men coming to the temple to pray. I'm sure that you guys have heard it. And if you're not, then we're going to read it. Um... It's Luke chapter 18, verses 10 through 14, New King James Version. That's the version I'm reading, and I'm going to go ahead and get started. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess, and the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but be his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, Jesus said, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted i pray that we would not walk in a spirit of cain looking at abel but i pray that we will walk in a spirit of love a spirit of unity a spirit that believes that god loves me just as much as he loves the next person that he wants to be as close to you as he was David who God even said himself was a man after his own heart y'all that is what I'm striving for amen I want to go down in God's book as a woman after his own heart but to be a woman or a man after God's own heart we have to give him our heart first there is no way that you will get close to God without giving him your heart. There's no way. He sees it anyway. He sees your thoughts. He knows every single thing about you, even down to the very hairs that you have on your head and how many you have. 
So why not give him your heart? Be honest with God. Be blunt with God, y'all. Tell it to him like it is. <laughs> Amen. Lord, I'm struggling. Lord, I'm jealous. I'm working through this. I, I feel envy towards this person, towards what they have, towards that house they're living in, that career they have, that person they married. I'm mad. When's mine going to come? Lord, I'm battling in my flesh tonight with lust against this guy. Ladies, we got to be honest. We have to be honest. Lay it all out there. Because God sees it anyway. But it's something about you trusting God with your emotions. Something about you trusting God. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all, for the car. Something about you trusting God with your emotions and with your heart. That just will catapult your relationship to the next level. Because so many people try to hide their heart from God. But when you show it to him and you say, Lord, I'm having trouble with this. Please help me with this. He undergirds you and gives you the strength that you need to keep going. Even on days when you really don't know if you're going to be able to keep going or not. I just had one of those days yesterday. <laughs> In those moments when you're like, God, I don't know how much longer I can do this. He undergirds you. Lay your heart out there. Give him your heart. And keep your eyes focused on the Father. Keep your eyes focused on him, y'all. Because he has great plans for you. Great plans for you. But you can't walk into those plans. You can't walk into that future. You can't walk into what God has for you. With your eyes looking at Abel, looking at someone else. I talked about jealousy um, as once again the Lord led me. And I talked about that last week. And I hope y'all did your homework. <laughs> y'all better did your homework. Uh, I'm just kidding, y'all. But uh, we're going to have some homework tonight as well. But I pray that you guys enjoyed this video, last week's video. If you haven't seen it, catch up on their homework if you haven't done it. Um, and I just pray that you all are blessed. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys your homework assignment. And then we are going to pray. So your homework assignment, this is Holy Spirit led because I promise you I ain't wrote nothing down. Your homework assignment for today is to write down two things that you want to improve in your relationship with God. Two things. So if you know that you try to hide your heart and different things from God, write down, hey, I want to be more open with God. If you know, um, God, I just need to work on this lust thing. Hey, I, wanna, I want to, to destroy the spirit of lust or whatever it is that's keeping me from you, that's keeping me from a relationship with you. Whatever it is, write down two things that you want Um your relationship to improve with God in. So doubt, whether it's you doubting God, fear, whatever it is, write those things down. And then find a scripture to combat it. So if you know that you, you're walking in a spirit of fear and you're like, God, I'm fearing, I'm, I don't know, I don't trust you, then write down uh, scriptures about trust. If you know that, God, I don't believe that you um, have a husband for me, I don't believe that you're going to do what you say. Y'all get the gist. Write down two things that you want to improve in your relationship with God and then write down scriptures to match those two things. I hope that that makes sense. I'm going to give you girls an example as always. Um, but since you got your homework assignment, let's go ahead and pray and get out of here. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you for being God. We thank you for being our Lord. We thank you for being our Savior. And Father God, we just exalt you above our problems. We exalt you and your spirit above our hearts. We exalt you above our circumstance, our anxieties. And we just thank you, Father God, that your promises are yes and amen for us. But Father God, right now, we ask that you would create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, oh God. 
God and that we can walk upright, walk as you've called us to walk, walk in your power and authority and believe that everything that you have for us is for us and that no one can take it away. Father God, we bind up any spirits of jealousy, any spirit of comparison, any spirit that's like Cain that would have us to look at other people and not keep our eyes on you or keep our eyes on ourselves and keep our eyes fixed on those things above and not below, not on earthly things. Father God, we pray that you would shift our focus and get us back into alignment with you where we have gotten off. And Father God, right now, I just pray an extra strength to the women that are listening to this broadcast and a peace over everyone listening. Supernatural peace and a stillness not to be angry not to be evil in our hearts toward other people but to walk in love to walk in peace to know that you are a God of love and a God of peace to not walk in envy Father God give us the strength to walk in the fruits of your Holy Spirit fruits that others can see and attest to and know that you are real and that your mighty power is operating within our lives and changing us. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you for it. Amen. I pray that if that blessed you ladies, that you would share, share, share this video with others. That you would just know that God has greater for you. That you don't have to look at Abel. You don't have to look at anyone else. You keep your eyes focused on God and know that at God's perfect timing, everything that he has for you is going to come for you and nobody can take that away. And you will be catapulted mightily and suddenly into your destiny. But you have to give the Lord your heart. You have to. You cannot go far in this life without giving God your heart. Let's be doers, y'all. Not just talkers, but doers. People who actually live what we preach. I love you, ladies. And I will see you, ladies, next week in next week's topic and discussion. I really hope that God lets me talk about love. Y'all know I love relationships and love. And I've been studying love for child nine years. Lord Jesus, how the time fly. <laughs> so I love talking about it. Um, and I know I ain't going to be talking about it pretty soon. Because, baby, it's going to be a real ring on this finger really soon. Amen. I'm speaking by faith. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to get out of here. Um, I love you, ladies. And y'all just stay blessed. And know that um, God has not forgotten you. But right now, allow him to mold you, allow him to pour into you, and allow God to strengthen you and to make your relationship with him even stronger than what it already is. We don't want to be walking with a spirit of comparison because everybody's destiny and journey is different. Amen? So we have to be happy with the portion that God has given us. And for some of us, that portion is big, but you won't be able to walk into it with a nasty heart so we ask god to get in that holy spirit get in here clean create change do whatever you need to do i lay it on the altar god do whatever you need to do and not even just for ministry sake and just for show but for real for real i love you ladies and i will talk to you girls soon so next week is going to be special Stay up to date with the page, and I pray that you would share this video if it blessed you. And I'm getting out of here.